Do you smell like rotten eggs? Seriously, do you smell like rotten eggs? Ready for part five of my SIBO series? Let's go. Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sarah K. Hoffman, AKA A Gutsy Girl, and I am here today with part five of my SIBO series to talk all about hydrogen sulfide SIBO. Hydrogen sulfide SIBO is oftentimes associated with that rotten, smelly, stinky egg smell. If you know what I mean, then you know what I mean. And for years, I had no clue what that meant until I started to really dig into the research and understand what hydrogen sulfide SIBO was. Well, actually, to be honest with you, it's something that's relatively new. And so I would not have known way back when, but in hindsight, I'm able to look back now and see that what I was experiencing my freshman year of college was definitely hydrogen sulfide SIBO. So I suffered with SIBO for years and years and years and years before it was ever diagnosed. The reason that I know my freshman year of college is because I had my own dorm room and I would be so embarrassed to let anybody into that dorm room because without barely making any noise, I would stink up the entire room with just a little bit of gas and it smelled of rotten eggs. I know what you're thinking. This is disgusting. You're a female, please don't talk about this. Unfortunately, we do need to talk about it because it is more common than you think. And if you're watching this video right now, you likely have it and you want to know what it is. So I'm here to help you with that today. So why do you smell like when you have hydrogen sulfide SIBO? The reason is sulfur. Hydrogen sulfide SIBO, you will often see as H2 SIBO. That stands for hydrogen sulfide SIBO. And when it comes to hydrogen sulfide SIBO, here are some things that we know about it. One, bacteria called sulfate reducers feed on hydrogen produced by other bacteria and produce hydrogen sulfide. Two, typically present in patients who experience diarrhea. Three, will usually react to sulfur or sulfur containing foods. Four, the impact of glyphosate on the sulfur production in the body is profound. Five, histamine and sulfur overlap. Six, this gas is implicated in the development of SIBO and LIBO and can be underlying culprit in treatment resistant IBS, SIBO and functional digestive disorders. Number seven, hydrogen sulfide gas smells like rotten eggs and is toxic to our nervous system and our mitochondria. According to one GI doctor, to add insult to injury, SIBO can turn dietary sulfur or sulfate into hydrogen sulfide, H2S, a foul gas that smells like rotten eggs, temporarily reducing intake of high sulfur slash sulfate foods, beverages, and supplements can help get rid of SIBO. So there you have it. There's definitely things that we know about hydrogen sulfide SIBO, but there's just not a ton yet. I do believe that because SIBO diagnoses are on the rise, we are going to uncover and discover so many more things about all of hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide, and methane dominant SIBO. Some testing still doesn't accurately show if you have hydrogen sulfide dominant SIBO. You can definitely tell a lot by using the Food Marble Air 2 device. You can also tell a lot just by journaling. And one thing that you can try to do is you can try to journal the foods that you eat and then record your symptoms after. You're definitely going to need to really take a deep breath in and smell what those toots coming out smell like. But if you are keeping track, here are some common high sulfur foods. So if you notice that you're eating a lot of these and having a lot of that rotten egg smell, hydrogen sulfide SIBO could be the culprit. Here are some of those high sulfur foods. Almonds, asparagus, Brazil nuts, cauliflower, dried fruits that have sulfur in them, eggs, kale, onions, soybeans, turkey, and watermelon. 
Okay, so I hope that helped you understand just a little bit more about hydrogen sulfide SIBO, and hopefully it helped you understand and know if possibly that's what's going on with you and your gut. If you think it is, definitely go to your integrative practitioner or any GI specialist and ask to have a SIBO breath test done. If you have any comments or questions about hydrogen sulfide dominant SIBO, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, do subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you do not miss part six of this awesome and comprehensive SIBO series. I will see you again next time, my friend.